Welcome to the House of Healing for our uh, personal prayer and deliverance night tonight. Next uh, Thursday at uh, 6.15. Got a copy of it. The new movie on the rapture called Final. I guess it's, I haven't seen it, but apparently it's knocking everybody over. Showing in here next Thursday at 6.15. Three. I guess it's the scariest Christian movie ever made. Supposedly. I haven't seen it, okay? So I'm not going to vouch for something I haven't seen. But anyway, it's supposedly fantastic. 615, part one, tomorrow, uh, next Thursday. And we'll have our normal prayer service after that. And, and the next Thursday, we'll do part two. The grand finale. There's a lot of controversy about the rapture, and uh, I'll be the first to admit it. The Bible's kind of shaky on it. You know, it's I've heard arguments for a post-tribulation rapture sounded pretty good. I've heard arguments for pre-trib rapture sounds good. I've heard weak arguments for a mid-trib rapture. That one I never was able to. <laughs> absorb any of it, so I don't buy any of that at all, but uh, is it pre-trib or post-trib? I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's pre-trib, but don't, you know, I don't, that's not from the Lord, that was just my opinion, I could be wrong, but I do know this, <clears throat> there's a false doctrine in America that says that if you're a born-again Christian, you automatically go in the rapture. That's, that's not true. That's a false doctrine. Only a certain kind of Christian goes in the rapture. What kind? An overcoming Christian. Jesus told the Christians in Luke chapter 24, watch and pray that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come upon the earth. Escape what? Well, the whole section there is talking about the rapture and the second coming. And we know for sure the second coming is at the end of the tribulation. Nobody argues that point. Everybody agrees with that. It's only the rapture that people fight about. They don't fight about the second coming. Nobody does. Everybody says, hey, it's at the end of the tribulation, period. Everybody knows that. So what, what's that? What does that mean? Most of these mega churches here in Maricopa County will be open for business the Sunday morning after the rapture, with thousands of people sitting in the pews. Thousands. There are over four hundred thousand churches in the United States, and most of them will have a bunch of people in them after the rapture because the Bible says that lukewarm carnal Christians do not go in the rapture they don't make it don't, don't shoot the messenger I'm just telling you what it says Watch and pray, Jesus said, for you know not what hour the Son of Man comes. Why would he say that to a Christian? Why would he say that to a born-again Christian? Either Jesus has schizophrenia or, or dissociative identity disorder, or he knew what he was talking about, and he's telling you, you better change. How's the devil beating us? 
How's he doing it? He does it through people's minds. You know how he does it? Sure you do. He puts a negative thought in your mind. And if you receive that thought, he then puts another one. He puts a little critical thought in your mind. And if you receive that critical thought, he will then put another one in. And then, spiraling down. He will, like King David, put a lustful thought in your mind. And he took that one, so he got another one. And he got another one. Then he got another one. Then he called for Bathsheba. Yep. How do you backslide? Easy. A discouraging thought comes in your mind. You take that thought, then he puts another discouraging thought in your mind. Then another one floats in. It's all done through thoughts. Nobody forced King David to get her. Forced King David to number Israel. Nobody forced Samson to chase after Philistine women. Nobody forced him to do that. He had a thought come in his head. These Philistine women are they're hot. I'd like one. Mm -hmm. There they came. And before you know it, dude's eyes are poked out. Why? Couldn't catch the lies in the mind. Couldn't catch them. They just kept coming in. Parents tried to talk him out of it. Why don't you date one of these believers here in Israel? What's, what's the problem with you? What's going on? And people, God has sent people to try to talk you out of it. He sent them. Listen, you're listening, you're listening to fear thoughts in your mind. Why don't you listen? Why don't you believe God's word and just repent of that? They've come to you and said that to you. Somebody has tried to talk you out of your collapse. You fought them off. You know what Samson said? Get her for me. That quote, go get her for me. You fought them off. No, I'm scared. I'm going I'm to stay afraid. I'm staying scared. You, you've got to stay sick. It's not rocket science. Well, I must be a rotten person that... No, you're a regular person. You're a regular person, not a rotten person. I'll prove it to you. The Apostle Peter got hit after a thought came into his head. You know what? These Messianic Jews ain't going to like you eating with these Gentiles. You better get out of here. That's going to cause a controversy and you're going to get in trouble. They're going to let you have it. Whatever it was. You better snap out of it, Peter. And sure enough, he couldn't snap out of it. He had lunch with the Gentiles, and when the Messianic Jews showed up, he bolts. Why did he do that? He'd done it before, around the campfire. Only that time it was fear thoughts. If somebody finds out you know Christ, 
they'll kill you too. He panics. Remember the story? Peter was back to his old habits. What were those? Listening to negative, fearful thoughts. I saw you, you were with Christ. He says, well, I'll prove, to, prove, prove you wrong and I'll get out of this mess. I'll just start cussing like a sailor and I'll just deny everything and just start crazy. That'll convince her I wasn't with him. Well, what caused all that? He had a thought come into his brain, a fear thought. Hey, they're going to crucify you. What did he do? He did the same thing he did years later. I'm out of here. He bolts. What the heck's this got to do with me? Thanks for asking. You're sick, and all you do is listen to the symptoms your friends, your neighbors, your doctors, your nurses, they all explain to you in detail why you're sick. And you sit and listen to them. Paul shows up and he says, hey, Peter, come here for me. Now, if you eat with the Gentiles and then you run and eat with the Jews, you know what that is? What's that? You're a hypocrite. God love him. Peter repented. Wasn't he a great guy? Yep. If he, if he got caught on something, he would go think about it, and he'd just repent. Later on, he worked, wrote First and Second Peter. Have you ever read those books? <coughs> Super divinely inspired. Incredible material in those books. Life-saving data. What's the moral of that story? You, you are going to do it tonight. You are going to repent of sitting there with negative thoughts in your mind, fearful thoughts like Peter by the fire, and you are going to curse those things and you're going to kill them using your faith. You're going to rebuke those lies in your mind and you're going to crush those things. Why? Why would you do that? Well, you have the authority to do it, given to you by Christ. Because you have the Holy Spirit. You have God's Word. <laughs> Does anybody here not know they have authority over their thoughts. Raise your hand real quick. Okay, nobody? You know who doesn't have authority over their thoughts or can't exercise it anymore? Mentally ill people. Why not? They have been, they have, they have listened to negative thoughts in life so long that the spirits have brainwashed them and now they have a full-blown mental illness can't control their thoughts. Is anybody here mentally ill? Tonight. What's your diagnosis? Oh. What's what's the root cause of major depressive disorder? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All you have to do is realize that a demon of rejection pumping lies into your mind. They're all downer thoughts. <clears throat> and it's usually thoughts about you. You can smash that thing like a bug. You have an anxiety disorder? Oh, those are easy to fix. What's the root of those? Negative thoughts. Negative thoughts. 
a negative thought comes into the person's mind, whoop, and they instead of killing it right there, boom, they entertain that thought. So then another one comes in. As soon as the devil sees you entertain the first thought, the second thought comes in. That needs to be done. Those two will be healed tonight if they will repent. How do you, how do you repent? Well, here's how you do it. Wait a minute. I just had a fearful thought, and that thought's not my thought. And I don't have to listen to that thought anymore. I'm going to go broke. I'm going to die. I'm sick. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth to come out of my head. Wait a minute. I thought you had to go to a seminar and go through a 10-step program. No. It took that long to do it. Repentance takes... Milliseconds. Why don't some people do it? Well, there's dozens of reasons, but one of them is they're mentally lazy. They've had this condition for so long. Oh, they just kind of get poked. Hebrew. What needs to be done? Well, sometimes I try to help them. I try to shock them out of it. I'm very blunt with them. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to get that person to grasp a hold of God's word and believe it. second reason they do it is because it's been going on for so long, it's a mental behavior pattern. They just suddenly start naturally thinking something critical, negative, fearful. It just goes normal because they've been brainwashed. What happens is if the person will repent, the Holy Spirit will help them catch the thought anointed click wait a minute that was a critical thought and at that moment you have to fight that if he tells you two or three times you do nothing he'll stop telling you he won't keep telling you I had a guy come from counseling one time, had an obsessive thought disorder. Went over my whole routine with the guy. And nothing seemed to work with him. So, I thought, well, I want to teach this guy something I call war tongues. So, I said, now, here's what you do when you get a negative thought here in the, in the prayer room. So as soon as a negative thought comes in, here's what I want you to do. I want you to, to literally just torpedo it. And I want you to blast it to the gates of hell. Whatever the thought was. And I think the thought that came in was, I don't think this is going to work. Or does this really work? Or something like that. It was something similar to that. I don't remember exactly. I said, oh, did you just have that thought? Well, the guy caught it. He told me what it was. If I ask you what your thought is, and you're, can you tell me what the thought is? That means you can catch it. Does that make sense? Because I, I'm not a mind reader. I can't. If you told me what your thought is, that means you caught the thought. That means you're able to catch it. And then I told him, here's what you do. You take that thought and just repeat it, and then you let the devil have it. Burra I 
just blasted that thought through the gates of hell. I call it wartime. You can pick out any little thing in your life and kill it like that. That sounds stupid. It works. That guy got started shaking and crying like a baby. Man. Holy Ghost has come right on him. When you do that, what are you telling the devil? You're telling him, listen, you know what? You've been destroying me for I don't know how long. I've had enough of it. I'm going to fight back now. Does that make sense? If you just roll over and take it again, he'll just come back tomorrow night. Then he'll come back the next night. Why is your heavenly father like you to fight? Why is he do it? Why is he like that? Because in Hebrews 11, the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. It's You can't do it. You can't do it. When he sees you exercising your faith, you're fighting back. That requires faith. That requires motivation. That requires desire. Correct? It takes no desire whatsoever, no motivation or nothing, just to do nothing. Anybody can do nothing. People do nothing by nature. See? And the Holy Spirit and the devil want the opposite from you. They want you to really step it up. See? The devil man wants you to start having some super bad thoughts tonight. Real bad ones. And then he wants you to start panicking. Then he wants you to go get a razor blade. Then he wants you to go slit your wrists. Nobody believes me. The Holy Ghost wants you to do the opposite. He wants you to catch that thought and that lie and just smash that thing. Using God's word, using your faith, using your authority. Well, I don't know. I don't like to do that. That's a demon of cowardice. You've got some spirit of cowardice that's turned you into a gutless loser. And you better turn around and fight. Why is that? God has not given you the spirit of fear. You have power, you have love, you have a sound mind. The Greek word is delia for fear there. It means a coward. God has not given you a spirit of being a coward. You fight like you did today. Are you from California? Yes. What's your name? Kaylee. Why'd you come here? Because I was trapped. I meant freedom. Freedom in the Holy Spirit. I got, um, what is the word? Delivered. Yeah, that's the word. Wonderful. Oh, wow. <laughs> I never interview anybody that sings better than I do. I bother you, okay? You follow that? I'm not doing that. No, that girl came from California. She had severe... What I just talking about. Negative thoughts in the mind, fear thoughts and everything. They all came out of her. How did it happen? Well, initially she was a little slow, so I kept being patient. I kept working with her. I kept saying things. And so pretty soon she started to crank it. And when she picked it up, boom, the devil started collapsing. Then they started coming out. Does that make sense? So she had a slow start. Hey, we all have slow starts. Who cares? I kind of slow. Everybody has slow stuff. It takes a while for everybody to kind of get into the groove and crank the thing. It's not. It's not. It's not a bad thing. Everybody's like that. We're all like that. People, people. You as a people, and that's what happens to people. Sometimes they get a little slow start, but then.
Who's the backslider here tonight? Been backslidden? Only one person? Oh, that's great. Two? Oh, he's too beautiful. Uh, backsliders are particularly loved by God. He has a special affection for backsliders. Did you know that? That's right. He told a parable for backsliders. He said, hey, if I have a hundred sheep and I lose only one of them, I'm going to leave these sheep here, safe haven. I'm going to hunt down that one sheep until I find him. When I find him, I'm going to pick him up and carry him home. <laughs> <laughs> backsliders are great. I love backsliders. I wish I had a whole church full of backsliders. He told another story. The prodigal stuff. What a great story. The prodigal son did what you did. I went off and done some other things. And boom, he came back to himself. He said, you know something? I got to go home. If you can get a backslider to reach that point where he wants to go home, the Holy Ghost will hunt him down. I mean, like bloodhound. Fine. As long as they still like being in the pigsty, he won't show up to get them. If a person still likes being in a pigsty, if you like your anxiety, you like your fear, you like your loneliness, you like your whatever it is, he's not going to force you to get healed. He won't do it. But if you have had enough of it and you want to come home, man, I mean, he runs down. Terrible, the father leaped off the porch and ran down the dusty trail to get to him. Put a new robe on him, put him a new ring on him, bought him some jewelry, dressed him down with some bling, had a giant buffet for the guy. You know what that parable was really about? Actually, it wasn't backsliders, it was about the other brother. Unfortunately, backsliders sometimes have to come back to church. And somebody kind of turns their nose down on them. Oh, yes. Not here. We like backsliders. Like them. Love backsliders. I like other people too. Whores. I just love having a bunch of whores around. Man, the Holy Ghost loves whores. It's incredible. I like other people too. Sick people. Jesse loves sick people. He likes sick people. I like something else too. Tough cases. The Holy Ghost seems to shine brightest. On a tough case. Because the pressure's not on us. Why is that? I can't heal anybody. So that means if somebody gets healed, I don't get any credit for it. If they don't get healed, I don't get the blame for it. I'm out of the loop. is what happened. You, 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 you. You can learn to think like I do. Right. Years of training. <laughs> and then you can be cured. All right, now, tonight you are going to repent. Raise your hand if you're not going to repent so we can ask you to leave. Raise your hand. Anybody in this section? Anybody here? Is anybody here not going to repent? 
you listened to me and you said, you know what, Brother Mike, <laughs> shove that up there. I got no bad feelings for you at all. None at all. Love you anyway. You can just leave. Because we don't want anybody doubting, hindering other people. Everybody? <laughs> nobody's going to, nobody needs to leave. Everybody's going to repent. Is that correct? All right. Well, shall we pray then? Father, <clears throat> tonight I just took a poll. And there's a lot of people here who love you tonight. And there's a lot of people here who need you tonight. They love you and they need you. And I told them, I told the streamers, point blank, that backsliders are your favorite people. That people who fight make you happy. People who will fight the devil make you happy. I told them that, Lord. And I believed it. That's why I said it. Father, I'm going to ask you, to, every person tonight who's willing to repent, who's willing to smash those ugly thoughts in their mind, every person that's willing to turn their back on tonight, every person who tonight wants to make the rapture, doesn't want to get caught at the trumpet as a lukewarm or carnal Christian and have to go through the tribulation, either all of it or part of it, whatever it is, Every person here tonight, Lord, I'm asking you, I want you to give them the anointing. I want you to give them the anointing tonight. So they, when they're here, they will leave a changed person. They will leave a changed person. I want you to give each person here the courage to break off whatever relationship they have to break off that's causing them to have fear and to doubt and to sin. Any person, they're hanging around regular basis that's voluntary, I'm asking you to give them the courage to cut the tow line and let that boat go and let it go to, out to sea. I'm asking also, Lord, tonight that you will put the seed of discipleship in somebody in this room tonight so they no longer want to be just a Christian anymore, just trying to make it to the rapture. No that they will become a disciple, a fighter, somebody who's going to completely change their lives, completely change their lives, and surrender everything to you. I pray, Lord, if there's one or two, even a third possibly, somebody in here wants to be a disciple, wants the anointing, wants the gifts of the Spirit, wants to fight, wants to learn spiritual warfare, wants to do the right thing. Somebody, one or two, maybe a third, somebody, anybody who wants to do that, I'm asking you to give them a special anointing of grace tonight to make that decision in their heart and get rid of their rotten friendships, to get rid of the evil sin in their life that so easily besets them and that they will receive the anointing to catch these negative thoughts in their mind and crush them. Or as Paul told the Corinthians, take that thought captive like a prisoner. I'm praying right now for that anointing to fall tonight on your beloveds, the ones you love the most. That's the people here at the house of healing. In the name of Jesus. Now, if you've got a bondage of some sort, please come up to the front right now. We're going to pray for you. And we're going to ask God to drop the anointing on you. We will be showing that movie next Thursday and the next Thursday, part one and two, at 6 .50. Just come down to the front. If you have decided you want to get healed, you've decided you want to come home, you've decided you want to repent, you've decided you want to change, you're going to do that. And the ministry team is going to come forward in just a second. Streamers, we turn down the lights because we want everybody to have visual privacy. We're giving them a chance to be able to pray between them and the Lord so nobody else can see them. Don't worry about the fact that the lights are off. We're not trying to scare anybody. We're just trying to make people feel comfortable and have some privacy, visual privacy. Jesus, Jesus, Lord. Tonight, Father God, I pray... 
I pray right now, Lord, for the anointing of the Holy Ghost to come upon each of these beloveds. This one here. That fear demon's got to pay for this thing. This one here. Satan stole a bunch of his life, years of his life, and then wasted them. This one, compromising his faith in the name of Jesus. This one, doubts and unbelief. This one, negativity and criticalness. This one, lies of Satan. Lies of Satan. This one, healed of backsliding. This one, doubts and unbelief and fear in the name of Jesus Christ. Tonight, the anointing must fall on these saints of God. These saints of God, these powerful future warriors in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on now, just repent with me. Come on, whatever, that, whatever it is, just speak it out and repent of it. Father God, I ask you to forgive me. Forgive me for saying negative things, for believing negative things. Forgive me for being discouraged over family members who sin. Being discouraged over neighbors who sin. Oh God, I ask you right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that you forgive me and wash this evil from me. I command these negative thoughts in my mind to be crushed right now. Just say that. I command these negative thoughts in my mind to be crushed. Repeat after me. I command these evil thoughts in my mind to be crushed right now in the name of Jesus. I command this evil thought in my mind. I command these doubts and this unbelief to come out of my head right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Every fear spirit in my brain, I command it to go now in the name of Jesus. Every negative thought I had about a relative or a friend, I bind it right now in the name of Jesus. I bind it right now. Come out. I bind it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Every critical thought I had about my husband or my wife in the name of Jesus. I command this thing to come out of my body right now in the name of the Lord. Come out right now. Come out of my body right now. Unclean spirit. Mother's demons, go. Out right now. Come out right now. I release it now. Come out of me. Come out of me. Come on, ladies. Every ugly man that ever touched you must release you tonight. Every man who criticized you and ran you down and said negative things about you, in the name of Jesus, we will forgive that man. We will release that man to the Lord. We will let him go now. If you're sick tonight, put your hands on your stomach and command that spirit of infirmity to come right out of your body. I command this spirit of infirmity in the name of Jesus to come out of my stomach right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, get out of my body, go. Go. Come out right now. Unbelief and doubt, I command you to come out. I command this spirit of infirmity, go. There he is. He's coming out right now. Come out. Come out of the woman of God. Loose the woman of God right now. Come out right now, spirit. Come out right now in Jesus' mighty name. Go right now. Satan, loose your hold right now. Satan, loose your hold on me. Say that. Satan, loose your hold on me. Infirmity spirit, come out. Come out. Come out of her stomach right now, you snake. I command the occult, witchcraft, warlock, and sorcerers. You are bound in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of that body right now. Demons of religion, come out right now. Go. Come out right now. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Go. Rejection and fear, I bind your power. Come out of that body right this second. Go. Lyme's disease in the name of Jesus Christ. You filthy tick, I curse you, die. Lyme's disease, I curse you, come out. Come out of that body. Come out of this bloodstream. Come out of the DNA. Come out of this 
stomach in the name of Jesus. Come out of there. Lyme disease, I curse you. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. There's almost always a spirit of rejection associated with the Lyme disease. You demon of rejection, there it comes. Come out right now. Go. Come out. Come out, Satan. Come out. Go. There it goes. Go in Jesus' name. The Lyme's disease coming out of that woman right now. Come out, you poison. There it comes right there. There's Lyme's disease streamers coming out of this woman up here. It looks like a white. It looks like a white poison. It's like a white serum. It's like poison. Here it comes. It's leaving her right now. There it goes. Right there. It's coming out of her body right now. Come out of that body right now. Limes, I command you to just simply die. Demon of fear, you're hiding in the stomach. Go. Oh, what a shit up on the Oh, what a shit up on the Oh, my brachita, Martin. 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 Oh, my brachita, Anything that comes out, just release it. Go in Jesus' holy name. Lyme's disease, I place the curse of death on you. Go. Come out of that body right now. Go. Here it goes. Here it comes. Come out right now. Unbelief and doubt. Leave the woman of God. There it comes. There it goes. Get out of that body right now. Get out of that body right now. Go right now. Go right now. California, demons, go. Go from go. Sin, loose me right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on now, get nasty. Sin, I command you to loose me right now. Lying in negative thoughts, I curse you. Come out. Come out of me right this second. Doubt and unbelief, you are an evil spirit. I bind your power. Leave me at this very moment. Doubt and unbelief, I curse you. Come out right now. Out. Get out. Right now. Come out right now. Come on, let your tears go. Don't hold your tears back. Let your tears go. No, you don't say that. Good girl, right there. there go. Keep going. Keep speaking it. This lady up here just started speaking in tongues for the first time in her life. Come on, just release it. Streamers, just follow me right now. Follow me right now. Repeat after me. Aborababa. Say it. Aborababa. Tendoria. Ashumia. Borasika. Velosati. Say that. Say that. Repeat that. Repeat that. Just repeat that. Ekurama Shondai. Bonde Moshandari. Say that. Repeat it. Just repeat it. Come on now. Now, anything that comes out, there's no wrong answer. Just release whatever comes out. Anything. Just like that, you just repeat it. You just release it. You're not learning how to speak in tongues. You can't learn how to speak in tongues. It has to come out of your spirit, man. You got to let this thing go. Repeat it. 
Streamers, are you speaking in tongues right now? Just slow it down. Slow it down for a quick second and just sing it out. Singing in tongues is the highest form of worship known to man. You singing in a heavenly language, you're praising him, it draws in the Holy Ghost. You can draw in your anointing by singing in tongues. It works every time. Beautiful. Now just slow it down and just put a little hum to it. Ready? Like this. Good. What happened? What's going on? I feel better. I yeah, feel it left. Better. It's gone. What was wrong with you? Thank you. Limes. You had Lyme's disease? Disease. Um, no use of my arms. Um, just no strength. A lot of pain. Upper body pain. Now check yourself out. Check your body out and see if there's any pain left. I feel good. Is there any pain at all? I don't, I'm not feeling any pain right now. What was happening to you when you were going through deliverance? Was something coming out of you? I felt like, yeah, like I felt something leaving. Something leaving. Yeah. Did you have any pain in your hips before you came here tonight? Um, not in my hips. Shoulders? Uh, my shoulders, yeah. And both your arms? Thank you, Jesus. These two women up here are getting healed of ex-husbands. Listen, if you've got a bad ex-husband right now, the Bible says in Mark, ch Matthew chapter 5 that we are to bless those who curse us. We are to pray for those who despitefully use us. Now, your ex-husband right now has uh, been targeted for a blessing tonight. Honey, in the name of Jesus, you hurt me, you lied to me, you stole, you beat, you molested my Whatever you did. I turn you over to Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and I forgive you for what you've done. I forgive you right this second for what you've done. I forgive you, and I bless you in Jesus' mighty name. I will not hold a hard feeling for anybody in this world. You did it. She already released her ex-husband. Good. If you release your ex-husband, you just get healed quickly. If you need to heal, please come up here quickly so we can pray for you. Please don't leave without prayer for healing. Streamers, if somebody has the same thing wrong with them that you do, that's a sign from God. You're here to get healed. You get healed too. <laughs> you know. Praise the Lord. Last kill a la 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 la
Streamers, in the name of Jesus, this woman is getting delivered of legalism. If you are a, have a legalistic or witchcraft background and you like to control people, you're a manipulator. People get out of control, so you say things and you try to bring them back under control through manipulation. Go ahead and repent of it right now. Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus to forgive me of initiating witchcraft and control of other people, trying to control them, and then being frustrated when they're out of control. They're not under my control, so I get frustrated with them. I'll repent of this right now. I repent of this right this second. In Jesus' holy name, I stop it now, and I release this horrible spirit of legalism. I release the spirits I picked up at the Baptist Church. I release the spirits I picked up at Seventh Day Adventist, Roman Catholicism, any religion with legalism as a basis. I now reject it and renounce it. And I turn my back on it in Jesus' mighty name. Come on. In the name of Jesus, the Son of God, I repent of legalism. Tonight I repent of seeing people without unconditional love. I repent of not having the love of God in my heart and seeing them with patience and with compassion. I repent of it right this second. I repent of criticizing other people. With a nagging, nitpicking spirit, I bind that filth, that evil in my soul, and I demand it to leave me in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Nitpicking other people will spoil your anointing and rot out your destiny so fast you won't even believe it. It'll just kill you. It will kill you. Streamers, go to the website, hardcorechristianity.com, and hit the post-deliverance button. Hit the post-deliverance button and go through that process so you do not get reinfected, so you do not pick up spirits again, and so you do not lose your healing. Go to the teaching page and read the articles, How Satan Controls the Mind. <laughs> what happened to you, ma'am? Uh, just a... Uh delivered from legalism how'd you get it um, for, uh, legalistic churches and uh, did you repent tonight yes uh, is it gone yes <laughs> go devil keep coming the earache's gone, gone the leg pain's gone it's all gone yes incredible You're, it's all healed it was all caused by legalism legalistic religion is evil you got to cast it out of you and get rid of it satan i bind your power right now in the name of the lord you will loose god's people you will let every single one of them go thus saith the lord streamers go to the website hardcorechristianity.com and read the articles how satan controls the mind legalism is the law of Moses for today? Read that article on the website. Get off of the law of Moses. Get off of the Old Testament. You are now under the New Testament, the New Covenant, the New Testament laws. You are not under the old law. The letter kills, but the Holy Ghost, he gives life. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, another blowout at the House of Healing. I will be teaching at 6.30 p.m. Pacific Time. Streamers, see you tomorrow. Tomorrow's your night to be healed and delivered. Thus saith the Lord.